how to get the fifth boss cell in dead cells. For this, you will need to beat the giant on four cell difficulty. And here I will give you a guide for the bolt route and how to beat the giant. So you will be able to get the fifth boss cell for your own. Also in this video, there are going to be spoilers of the game. So just to let you guys know. Guys, welcome to the full guide to get the fifth boss cell. So first I will break down the build we're going to be using, then the root details with some tips for the dungeon biomes, and as final, a boss guide for beating the giant and all that on four cell difficulty. Otherwise you won't be able to get the fifth boss cell from the giant. So let's start off with the build we're going to be using. The build is inspired from a web page Steam A. So I used the build and made some changes to it. Credits to the writer, thank you, although I cannot pronounce that name. So when you are booting up Dead Cells, go to the custom game tab. You will unlock this option in the Ramparts level. So if you haven't got it yet, go to the Ramparts on normal mode and unlock it. When you are in the custom game tab, go to equipment and deselect all items and activate the items I will be referring to. So select the giant killer. The blueprint is dropped by the giant himself, so be sure to beat the giant first on a lower difficulty. What you need to do, otherwise I think you can't open the entrance to him in the forgotten supplicate, so defeat him first. The marksman's bow, the blueprint can be found behind the timed door when you go to the Asuri and reach it before 8 minutes. Rampart shield, the blueprint is dropped by the shield bearers. Heavy turret, this blueprint is dropped by the slashers. Powerful grenade, the blueprint is dropped by the bombardiers. Now for the mutations, we're going to go for necromancy. This is already standard on lock, so you already got this one. Next up is the Spite Mutation. You can find this blueprint between the toxic sewers transition level from the prisoner's quarters. On the left side, when you drop down, there is a secret area to get the mutation. Emergency Triage. This blueprint is dropped by the timekeeper after you took her down for the sixth time. The Death Inside Mutation is already standard unlocked as well, so you already got this one. And the last one is the acceptance mutation. This requires you to get the moonflower keys on three boss cells to open the doors in the high peak castle. What holds the blueprint for this mutation. If you don't know how to get this mutation, you can check out the guide for it on the channel. I will link it down below or click the card on the top right. So that is the build we will use. Further, go to the advanced option tab and disable legendary weapons because this will disable the altars in the game, what will give the enemies extremely high defenses, what is really annoying to deal with, so turn it off. Now you got all this set up, the loot pool will only drop these items you have selected, and how we will use the build is as followed. The giant killer sword is specifically only for the giant boss fight, so we will pick this up in the level before the giant, what will be the forgotten supplicate, well, we will buy it from a merchant because the weapons are of higher level when you buy them instead of getting them randomly. But the weapons you get from the flawless kills doors in the transition level, they are even more higher level than the ones you can buy. So if you can get the giant killer sword from the door before the boss fights, definitely pick that one up. But if you're buying this weapon, it is very expensive. So during your run, you want to save up as much money as possible. The marksman bow will be used until we buy the giant killer sword and the rampart shield is always equipped because parrying makes this game so much easier and especially for the giant boss fight. For our abilities we will use the powerful grenade in our two slots and when we are opening cursed chest we want to hope the game gives us a colorless heavy turret because it will scale up with our survival so it does more damage and you want to switch these witcher grenades Hopefully you will get two colorless heavy turrets dropped from the cursed chest throughout your run. But it is RNG based so you have to get lucky on this. Now let us move on to the route and the tips for the dungeon biome. So I start off with the general details about the levels and the tips for the dungeon biomes. 
The route goes as followed. Prisoner's quarters, promenade of the condemned, prisoner depths, Ursuri, Black Bridge, Stilt Village, Forgotten Supplica, and Guardian's Haven. All the power scrolls you find during your run, you want to dump them into survival so you will get the maximum damage output. For the brutality and tactics dual scrolls, put them into the stat, what gives you the most health bonus to get tankier. When you go for the flawless skills in the levels, you will be able to open the doors in the transition levels. So take it slow and go for those flawless skills. It is not a must, but behind these doors, the weapons are of higher level, so it's worth getting them. For the personal scorters, you will only need to kill 30 enemies. For the other levels, it's 60 enemies, and in the prisoner's depths, there is no door for the flawless skills. If you come across a challenging rift, enter at your own risk. These will give you an extra power scroll, but you have to jump over traps and they can lead to using a potion or death. And you definitely don't want to use any potions throughout your run and save them for the giant boss fight. So I recommend not entering any challenging rifts, only for the first two levels. It is fine, the traps don't really hurt as much in those levels. For your healing, don't worry, the necromancy and the death inside mutations will help you out with not dying during your run. So it is possible to save the potions for the giant. If you still need to use a potion, you can buy a flask recharge from merchants, but they are expensive, so keep that in mind. For beating the enemies with your marksman's bow, use it as far as you can to get the critical hits. This way you will almost one-shot every enemy and use your shield to parry their projectiles when enemies shoot through walls. This is extremely handy to take it slow so you can get those flawless kills. But side note, don't parry bombs, just run away from them. And parrying enemies regular attacks is also very handy to save you from getting hit. The powerful grenades will help with clearing groups of enemies and when enemies are in your face. Your bow doesn't really do that much damage so your grenades will help out as well when they are in close range. All your equipment should be of max quality forge level S, so they will do more damage. When you are picking up your equipment, look for passive bonus stats that will help you out and that the items give you a survival stat boost. The best passive bonus combo is when your equipment will poison the enemy and that your main weapon has the 100% damage bonus against poisoned enemies. Mainly, this is for the giant killer sword. It makes the boss fight with the giant extremely easier because of the damage you will do to him. If your grenades have the bonus stat that you will get your arrows back, it's also really handy during your run when you are using your bow. The heavy turrets you get from the cursed chest are always plus plus quality, so be sure to upgrade them to S when you get to the transition levels. Heavy turrets will always give you the tactics bonus stat, what isn't much of a problem because you will be more tanky so you won't die as fast. For the talismans you want to focus on getting as much damage reduction from them as possible and a lot of survival stat boost so you will deal more damage. For the cursed chest you will need to open 8 chests, yes that's a lot. But they will all give you an extra power scroll to get that maximum damage output. And the chest will need to drop the heavy turrets. Because they will help out with the giant boss fight. With the acceptance mutation it makes it a lot less risky when you're going for these cursed chests. So that is why we use it. So this is all done on 4 cell difficulty. So be sure to have it on 4 cells active before you start this. And here you will also take Melee's Infection from enemies if they hit you. If you got maximum infection then your health will be reduced very low. To heal the infection you can use a potion. I prefer not doing this only when it is about to hit max infection. You can heal it with food as well but you also have a chance that the food will cause infection. So be careful but because we use the death in sight and the acceptance mutation. We will get cursed and won't get healing from eating food, so it is not even worth picking up food. Some mutations will heal infection with their bonus stats. That is why we use the necromancy, so we can heal some infection by defeating bosses. And a last option is to buy cough syrup at merchants. 
to reduce the infection by 30%, what is likely the best option for you to heal the malice? Now that we got the general details covered for the route, now I will walk you through the dungeon biomes with some tips to get through them. We start off in the prisoner's quarters. Be sure to have your four boss cells active here and pick up your bow and shield. In this level, you can pick up two power scrolls and need to get 30 flawless kills. A good tip is to parry the inquisitor's projectiles back at them and beat every enemy from long range to make use of your bow. Also a general tip, when enemies see you and you jump to another platform, they will teleport to chase you. This is really a good thing because here you can take down enemies one by one and wait for them to teleport and shoot them down with your bow when they have teleported. In this level you want to get the powerful grenades ready in your two slots. So if you could not get them randomly in this level, you can buy them. They don't really cost that much in the first level. But after that, I recommend not buying any equipment from the merchants throughout your run until we buy the giant killer sword in the Forgotten Supplicate. For the mutations, we first get Necromancy, then Death Inside, and then we get the Acceptance Mutation. Next level is the Promenade of the Condemned. Here you can pick up one Power Scroll and two Dual Scrolls. And you will need to get 60 flawless scales to unlock the door in the next transition level. I recommend you just go through the surface of the level first because it is a lot easier not to get hit and you can take down the enemies from long range. Only real frustrating thing is the protectors. They will shield the enemies. Here you need to get close to the enemies and one shot the protector with one of your grenades to break the shields so you can deal with the enemies around you. When you found all scrolls and got the flawless kills, you need to search for the prisoner's depths entrance. It is mostly in the last section where you will need to go down from the surface and head to the next level. Don't forget to pick up the death inside mutation when you are in the transition level. The prison depths is pretty hard. It is very close range, so your build is kinda shit here but using your grenades is your best bet. In this level, you will need to get a golden key from the enemy. It is randomly dropped from the enemies throughout the level, so you have to defeat the enemies until it drops the key. If you found the key, then ignore the enemies and head to the entrance to the next level, where you can find a power scroll behind the door before the entrance. Also, before you go to the Asuri, you want to go back in the prison depths and find a four cell door and open up the cursed chest inside. I recommend taking the 10 death counter with you to the Asuri because it is a lot easier not to get hit in that level than in the prison depths. So do this before you enter the Asuri. In this transition level you pick up the acceptance mutation because we got to get seven more cursed chests to open from this point on and still need to deal with the 10 above her head. The Suri is the easiest level in the run. The area is very big and the enemies aren't really that much of a problem. Only watch out for two enemies. The guys with eyeballs what do a red aura. This can catch you off guard. So be extra careful when you are cursed. And for the little orange dump enemies made by the machines. They can catch you off guard because they really blend in well with the level design. So when you're cursed keep your eye out. There are three power scrolls here and one dual scroll. So pick them up. Here there are two cursed chests in the two cell door and in the four cell door. So open them up as well. For the flawless skills you need to get 60 to open the door. And the next level is the black bridge where you find the concierge. Before you get to the entrance, you want to go to the one cell door. If you got some release infection, you can buy the cough syrup to reduce it by 30% or get a flask recharge if you had to use a potion up to this point.
Next is the Concierge boss fight. This fight is very easy. You should probably have no problem with him. The only real annoying thing is his damaging aura. So you want to stay way in the back so you get those critical hits with your bow and run to the other side if he is close and has no aura active. For your grenades, it's really handy if you got the passive bonus that your arrows will go back when you hit him with the grenade to keep the damage going. If you get him flawless, you will get a legendary from the door in the transition level. This can be very useful because if it has a heavy turret behind it, definitely pick up the heavy turret. Having it legendary is way better than getting it from a cursed chest because of the stat boosts. Next up is the Stilt Village. Here you will pick up three power scrolls and one dual scroll. There are three cursed chests here behind the two cell door, three cell door and normally in the level itself. It can be very risky to die here while cursed. I recommend defeating the enemies outside from long range with your bow. This is your safest options. Look out for the pirate bombs when you're cursed and also for the flying bombers. They will close the gap by flying above you and then slam on the ground. This attack you have to dodge and cannot be parried. So be careful for these guys when you're cursed. You will need to get 60 flawless kills for the door. And from this level, we go to the forgotten supplicare where you will need to use a villager key in a side room, what will go to the entrance to the Forgotten Supplica. So be sure to not open the door to the clock tower because otherwise you can't get to the giant boss fight. So you have to restart your run again. Now the last level before the giant is the Forgotten Supplica. Here we will pick up five power scrolls and we can find two cursed chests here behind the one cell door and the three cell door. Little side note of being cursed in this level, the light and dark feature will instantly kill you if you stay in the dark for too long while you're cursed. I recommend leaving some enemies ready for you to kill during the level. So when you open up a cursed chest, you can go back to those enemies and simply kill them to lift the curse. This is also a general tip for all cursed chests you pick up during your run. This will avoid the unexpected enemy encounters and also avoid having to attack a elite enemy while you cursed. Because I recommend not attacking any elite whatsoever while you are cursed. They will definitely end your run. So when you get to the end of this level, you want to find a two cell door. This one will lead to the Guardian's Haven where the giant boss fight is. But before you go in there, you want to find a merchant in the Forgotten Supplica and buy the Giant Killer Short. Recommended that it has two survival bonus stats and some nice passive stats like damage increase, more critical damage and also 100% damage to a poison target if you have equipment that will poison the enemy. If you have the 60 flawless kills, there is a chance you can find a really high level Giant Killer behind the door with hopefully some nice bonus stats. Before you want to fight the giant, you want to reset your mutations in the transition level and change them to death inside, spite and emergency triage. Now you can maybe reroll your weapon bonus stats to make a good combo with the poison damage if you got some money left. So when you get all that, your build should be like this, giant killer, rampart shield and two colorless heavy turrets. You have a chance you didn't get the two heavy turrets or any for that matter. No worries, although it makes the giant fight easier. So now I will give you a boss guide for the giant. This will include his moveset and how you are going to take him down. The fight itself is simple. Attack is two arms. When you took down one arm, you can jump on it and damage the giant's eye to take down his health. Now the hard part his attacks so he will use his arms to punch you from the sides either with his left or right arm best way to block it is just to parry it with your shield he will slam the ground with his fist leaving a shockwave to the sides from his fist when he hits the ground he either does this with his left arm or right arm best way to avoid it is to jump to the side so you can dodge his fists and the shockwave at the same time for his projectile attack, what he does, either from his left or right arm, 
stand still and parry it with your shield. It's the best way to avoid it and you can parry multiple times right after you did a successful parry so you can parry more projectiles. And because of the spiked mutation, you can do a lot of damage to his arms while you are parrying projectiles. He will charge up his arms and you can see energy glowing on his shoulders up to three times. When it is full, he either does a very rapid ground pounds with his left arm or shoot projectiles from his right arm when they are fully charged. These attacks you want to avoid 100%. Every time you took down his arm, the charges go away. So you want to keep taking down his arms so he never does these attacks. That is one of the main reasons the heavy turrets are handy. They will keep attacking the other arm while you are damaging his eyes. So you can keep damaging the giant and take down his next arm right after he gets back up again. So when you got him down to his second phase, around 70% of his health, he will shoot lasers from his eyes. Just stand right in the middle to avoid it and get ready to parry. He might do his projectile attack during this or punches you right after the laser attack. On his last phase, around 50% health, he will slam the ground with both his arms in the middle, leaving a shockwave to each side. So jump to the sides from the platform to avoid the slam and the shockwave at the same time. Also after this attack, crystals will fall from the ceiling to damage you. So that was it for his attacks and how to avoid them. Now I'm going to play out the full fight when I beat him the first time with only one heavy turret. So you can see it doesn't really matter but the fight is still pretty hard. So I will talk you through it so you understand it a little bit more. We are right before the boss fight right here and after the cutscene the fight starts right away. So here you want to drop down your turrets and start dodging the attacks. And after you dodge it you can damage the hands a little bit with your weapon. Be sure to parry the punch attacks and when you took down the arm you want to attack the eyeball of the giant. The last two hits from your attack combo from the giant killer sword. You're going to do a lot more damage than the first two hits of the sword. So you definitely want to use those two hard hitting attack combos. We are in the second space now where he will use the lasers. So stand in the middle to avoid it. And when you reach a next phase, the giant will automatically go back up again. So here he will punch with his two fists on the ground and will leave crystals falling from the ceiling. Here the Rampart Shield is very handy because if you parry you will be granted a shield and also the emergency triage mutation is very handy. If you use a potion you get a shield as well what definitely helps you out a lot when you want to attack the eyes because there are going to be crystals falling on your head while you are damaging the eyes. So the shield makes it a lot easier to damage the boss. But guys, that is how you get the fifth boss cell from the giant. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comment section if you got the fifth boss cell by watching this guide. And for the next part for this video, I will guide you through the game on five cell difficulty. The build and route is kind of similar like in this video. But we are not going to defeat the giants. We will go from the Forgotten Supplica to the Timekeeper and move on from there towards the Astro Lab. So if you are interested, you can check out the next part when it is available. If you want me to post a full playthrough start to finish on how to get the fifth boss cell with the build and route we covered in this guide, then let me know in the comments if I should post it. But if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to smash a like button. And if you want more related content like this for Dead Cells or other games, you can check out the channel and I thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.